If I were teaching a course uh, on indigenous settler relations in the pre-confederation period, one of the first points I would make to students is that even while we're using terms or categories like indigenous and settler for convenience, um, that those categories, uh, of course, conceal and in some ways obscure the vast diversity within both of those groups. So um, um, indigenous nations across Canada um, represent there's a, a great deal of cultural diversity, uh, different beliefs, different uh, religions, different patterns of social organization, of course, different languages, um, different ways of viewing the world, and, and ways of relating to it, so, uh, and to each other. So um, it's important to, uh, even as we look at indigenous settler relations generally, to, to understand in each case the specificity of, of the First Nations culture involved. And the same thing holds true for the category settlers. Um, it's, there's no one settler. There are many different sort of types. Um, and uh, uh, you know, military officers, explorers, um, scientists, missionaries, uh, merchants or traders. Um, and so each of these um, types, I guess, um, relates to, might relate to indigenous peoples in a different way. Um, and another point I would stress is that um, for the studying encounters in the 16th, 17th, or 18th centuries, it's, I think it's worthwhile um, reflecting that both the various indigenous groups involved and the various um, incoming settlers or colonizers, um, both these groups are very remote from us. Even if um, we might be tempted uh, to see affinities with one or the other group based on our own um, place in Canadian society, um, uh, people of the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, whether they were Mohawk or Spanish or uh, Ojibwe or French, uh, are very distant from us. Um, times, a lot has changed uh, over 300 years. And so it, um, a part of what we have to do to understand those early encounters is to um, reconstruct, to kind of appreciate the backgrounds from which people came, the, the things they took for granted, the things they believed in, uh, the way they saw the world. And, uh, and so that, uh, um, so I, I guess the one point would be to be wary of easy assumptions uh, about people who on, on one level might look similar to us, might seem to share some of our values, um, but at other levels can be remarkably, even radically different. And that difference is something that we want to understand, uh, that we want to respect, um, not judge. And, and as historians, it's one of the, the marvelous things we can do is to understand the, the very different ways people had of, of being human uh, in the past, uh, ways which may not exist today or may exist in revised or, or, or new ways. Uh, in my view, studying the uh, relationship between indigenous peoples and settlers and colonizers in the from the, the earliest contact is, is really studying the foundations of, of Canada itself. Um, so much of, of what Canada is today is, is built on the legacy of those early relationships. Um, sometimes we don't always acknowledge this in our, our collective memory, but uh, important uh, alliances, uh, treaties, uh, relationships between various First Nations groups and and the French and the English um, really made modern Canada what it is today, and and this is is very clear if we step back a bit and look at a continental perspective and we compare indigenous and contrast indigenous settler relationships in Canada with those in the United States, those in Mexico in the same period. Um, we can see that, that the, the colonial era uh, 
shaped in many ways the three nation states that would ultimately emerge on the North American continent, Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. And um, the types of societies uh, that live within those, those three, uh, the, within the borders of those three nations are, um, are in many ways the result of um, encounters or patterns set up from the earliest times.